we've already entered a new era, and we recognize that women have the capabilities of doing great scientific work. And yes, I appreciate that this is an honor to be the first woman, but I won't be the last. <laughs>
on a project that I was working on called the Lakewood Project that Bob Warren and Charlie Thibault and Vincent Ostrom were in. And they were going to write the definitive book about metropolitan governance in Los Angeles. And she was a sort of an, a librarian gopher for that project. When she completed her master's degree, it did not advance her. I was not admitted to a PhD program. I was admitted to a, a master's. But then when I decided I liked it and I would like to do a PhD, that was an entirely different picture. And I was in this hostile environment where uh, a lot of the faculty did not like it that there were women in the program. Economics just said no. And part of the reason for that was because I had not had any math in college. And part of the reason for that was that in my high school, they didn't let girls uh, take trigonometry unless they got an A in algebra and geometry. And so I never had the kinds of math courses that economics students had. Having never taken calculus before, she more or less taught herself calculus and reapplied to the political science department. And by the spring semester, she was admitted to the doctoral program. And then, as they say, the rest is history. As I stressed in my uh, speech accepting the Nobel Prize, uh, Vincent has been a very key part of the foundation. I consider that an award to him and the workshop. Bad. Uh, but the, the good bad is all on conformance to rules, not on your skill. The workshop was an idea for a kind of laboratory. We wanted something that would be a name that would be distinct and therefore rules and regulations in the university would not apply. The effort that we were trying to make in the 70s was to develop a arena in which we could have very consistent, in-depth discussions about political theory as it applied to practice. There were several foundations. One, at the University of Chicago, there had been a tradition for, uh, for some time of enabling workshops to be created that were across disciplines, so that more than one discipline would be likely to participate. Secondly, we had had the great fortune of working with an excellent cabinet maker in his workshop. So we had those two, one strictly academic background, one strictly craftsmanship background, to create something that wasn't a teaching department and wasn't a center, uh, but was an arena, uh, an environment in which we could work together. She trained me without training me to think how you would deconstruct a problem and get to the root of the problem and come back to the, 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 the puzzle that you have. She liked to use the term puzzle. <laughs> and so the puzzle and the, the, the content and the journey between the two, it's a pretty important social scientific process that I learned through Lynn's work. I think one of the things that attracted Lynn to Vincent is that from day one, he did take her seriously. They were together in a way that most married people never get together from day one. And the point is, neither of them would have been as, as important as they were together. Lynn and I have been close collaborators now for a period of 40 years. Being able to carry on conversations with Lynn at breakfast or at dinner time meant that we were able to continue to address puzzles and we looked upon the problems that we were confronting as puzzles to be solved. So instead of arguing, we were inquiring. When we did the house, so I had to draw it, we wanted the roof pitched this way. Well, there we were interested in the traditions of the American Indians and the far north. And in ranch houses, you had a roof running this way with a totem pole out front. So I ended up drawing a lot of this house. And then when we built the log cabin, um, Vincent did the initial sketch and I did all of the uh, to scale drawings for that. So I, I treasure uh, some of those ex early experiences. Eleanor Strom's give so much insights 
about how we can voluntarily deal with these social economy problems around us. How can we organize enterprises? How can we manage cooperatives so that we can tackle these uh, tragedy of the commons and collective action problems uh, around us in our daily lives. We had a huge amount to, to learn from Elena Ostrom in terms of governance. You know, most economic specialists and commentators do not talk about community engagement. They don't talk about ordinary people taking control of the decisions that affect their life. And here was this woman doing that. It was a struggle because so many of our, my political science colleagues really did not like what we were doing and did not like field work like we did. Because see, a lot of political scientists who did interviews interviewed legislators and mayors and governors and uh, people in the cabinet. Um, and so they found it strange that we were interested in what um, farmers and peasants and people uh, organizing water. And why are you doing that? Why? People had presumed that um, people could not self-organize. So Garrett Hardin's uh, Tragedy of the Commons predicted that they just couldn't do it. Uh, and so you had to either privatize it or you turn it over to the government. Didn't work so hard, going ups and downs, hills of Nepal, fording numbers of rivers to meet the farmers and to understand their way of working, their way of life. We had collected a very large number of case studies and could I get the specific rules? And I couldn't. Finally, I realized I was trying to get too specific and that what was important was to look at a broader level of findings, which I called design principles. Lin tried to verify the design principle what she has developed over a period of time through the field test. Getting it from the field, designing it, again going to the field for the wider verification. Part of the problems that people have with resources frequently is they disagree. They disagree on what there is there, they disagree on who's doing what, etc. And finding mechanisms to gain common understanding is very crucial. And that's not just having the public come in and tell people what to do. And so finally, after this huge struggle, um, I was able to write Governing the Commons. Whew. <laughs> it was a big struggle. <laughs> so Lynn's influence in me was about this, the, the importance of understanding this rational calculus of individual based on the life experiences of people rather than life experiences of maybe the leaders. I think now we have gained a much greater respect for human ingenuity, uh, creativity, capacity to come up with many kinds of solutions to challenging problems, and people can.